Today marks exactly six months of learning to code every single day for me. And what can I say that I've learned? Well, I can say that I've, I've learned a lot, but if you are just starting out, and especially if you're learning to code a little bit later in life, I wanna give you a realistic take on what it's been like over the past six months for me. I don't wanna sugarcoat it, no fakery, like I built an app in a weekend, all those kind of crazy stories, nothing like that. I just wanna give you the honest truth about what's been easy, you know, what's been hard. And I've written down a few questions as well when I was going through this video as to what I wanna answer. Questions that I would have really wanted to know on you know day one for me. So if you've just started getting into code as well, the idea with this video is that I wanna show you, you know, what to kind of expect when you're first starting out. Uh, more importantly, what to prioritize and what to do when things start to get hard. Inevitably, that is gonna happen. And even more importantly, after this entire six months, can you actually expect to work as a programmer? So those are some of the things that I'm gonna go through in this video, let's get into it. So one of the first questions that I wrote down is if I could go back to day one, day one Jake, what would I tell day one Jake? Well, I would tell him, forget free code camp, forget all of these other courses right now. For the first few days, just start building a small project. Now this means opening up a code editor, maybe for the first time and just following along with a tutorial. Why am I saying this? Well, because on day one, if you've never done this before, you've got no idea what anything is or where everything goes, what the heck you're doing and why you're doing it. And I feel like in the first week or so, if you don't build a small project, you won't understand the technologies like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And more importantly, how these technologies work together, you know, how they work in a code editor, how you link files together, how those files interact with each other. And this is not difficult stuff. I mean, you could learn all of this pretty much by day one, but because I was using uh, free code camp, the sandbox, the program that's in the browser, I didn't know how to properly set up a code editor till, you know, a few months in, once I started actually working within VS code and trying to build a small project. So I would say day one, go out and build a small project, even though, even though you might be confused. I have one on my channel if you wanna go check it out. It's a little quiz app but any small project, something using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in a project where you are using a code editor like VS Code, and even uh, preferably one that teaches you how to save your project on a version control like Git and then upload it to GitHub. This is so you can just get your bearings on how to set up a project and how to work with something as important as Git. Now, I know this might sound like a lot, but it will pay dividends when you start working on projects because you'll have a much better understanding of how things work. You're basically like taking a, you know, a drone view perspective on how things work together before you actually start working on individual technologies. And if you are using something like GitHub, you also get that green activity box as well every single time you save something on github and ideally i think at the beginning you should try log as many activity you know sort of days as you can i didn't do this at the start i wish i did and saving your projects to github committing your projects to github it also keeps you on track you go back you have a look at the activity you're like oh wow you know i've done something for an entire week every single day and i think also if you're looking for work it shows your dedication to potential employers that you've been working on code every single day. This is advice that I wish I gave myself on day one. Like I said, I didn't, and I wish I knew this. I wasted a few weeks without any activity on GitHub. So if you are a day one, this is what I recommend. I recommend, you know, doing this before you start something like free CoCamp. I feel like you'll be a lot better prepared when you're working on projects in any course that you choose because you've done this step beforehand. And after you've done that, after you've built your small little project, then you can go to free CoCamp or the Odin project or any other free resource or even your Udemy course that you might've bought. After you've done your small project, things will just start to make so much more sense as you go through one of these courses. So another question that I have down here is what have been the biggest challenges? Now, obviously there's been a few, but I think off the top of my head right now, there's really two that I can think of that you should know about. Now it's a huge cliche, but the first huge challenge that you're gonna experience is gonna be JavaScript. You're gonna feel like an absolute boss when it gets to HTML, CSS, you're gonna be creating little you know, uh, applications, you'll be styling them, you'll be thinking, yep, I got programming all figured out. Then you hit JavaScript and this is when you are going to want to quit. This is really where the rubber meets the road and it's when you're going to have the most doubts about your ability to code. So if I can add a little metaphor to this, what you'll experience when you get to JavaScript, I think of it similar to that obstacle course where soldiers have to sort of crawl to get to the end. That's essentially how it's going to feel when you start JavaScript. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to feel like you're barely moving forward, but the more you do it, the better you get. It really is just that simple and you're going to feel like you're working 
working at a snail's pace, but the idea is just to keep drudging through it. And by the way, I'm saying this from someone that had very minimal JavaScript experience before this. That's just how I think of it. If you've had minimal experience, you will probably feel the same as well. And so to provide some contrast for that metaphor, HTML, CSS, it just feels like you're going down a zip line. You start a bit slower and then you're sort of off to the races. And JavaScript is completely different. It's not gonna make any sense. And this is where you really need to chip away at it day by day. Learning JavaScript is a lot about building that memory bank and also learning how to think in JavaScript. You need to train yourself to think logically step by step. It is a programming language after all. Like I said, I'm no JavaScript expert, but I can do a lot with JavaScript now. And I think a lot of that comes down to just pure grit just holding on and not letting go. And I'll leave you with this to think about. For most people, you won't fully pick it up on the first pass. And what I mean by this is the first course that you do on JavaScript will be the first pass, the first pass through. And so you might not pick up everything and you'll be still pretty confused. But if you decide to start another course, that is where you're going to learn heaps. I mean, the second pass for me doing another course really helped. So that's what I recommend. If you take a course, go through the entire thing, do all of the exercises, then find another beginner course, and you can do this on Udemy, you can do this on YouTube, wherever it is, but go through another beginner course on JavaScript and you will have so many aha moments and things will just start to click and you'll be like, okay, now I get that. I understand that. I understand that. So the second pass, I think really is where the magic happens with JavaScript. And I think for that second course as well, it's also good to go through it with another instructor or with another platform because you'll most likely be working on different projects and that will keep you more engaged with learning JavaScript instead of going back through the same course. The concepts are all the same. Doesn't really matter who's teaching it. JavaScript is JavaScript, just like English is English. So that's my piece on JavaScript. Do a course, then do another one and it will really start to click. And something that I keep in the back of my mind when I'm going through JavaScript is I, I just remember this was built by humans just like me. So I can definitely learn this. I just got to keep chipping away at it. And I feel like I've picked up a fair bit of JavaScript along the way. So it's been hugely beneficial. The second challenge that I've thought about really is the tech world's online rhetoric. So what I mean is because you're now searching for tech related content, your algorithm is going to be full of tech videos. A lot of them are gonna be really, really helpful, but some of it is also going to be extremely contradictory. And what I mean by this is, you know, as, as someone that's just learning to code, you're probably gonna feel pretty discouraged at times. As an example, you'll come across one video that says React is the future, it's here for the long term, it's amazing, it's great. And then another video is gonna say that React is dead. You're gonna see this constantly with different technologies. And I mean, don't even get me started on the state of the tech job market as well. It's everywhere. People saying that it's oversaturated. AI is taking over. You know, there'll be no programmers in the future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And honestly, I don't have all the answers for these concerns, but I'm trying to block them out as much as I can. I don't think tech is going anywhere. If anything, AI is making technology more accessible for more people to start more online businesses. And I feel more online businesses means more tech opportunities in the future, just because of how many businesses will be built using AI. And they're going to need people that know what they're doing because AI is gonna be writing all the code, but when things go wrong, you're gonna need real programmers to fix the bugs, fix the issues, all that sort of stuff. And I don't think that AI will ever be perfect because it's being built by imperfect humans. Kind of philosophical yeah maybe and maybe a little bit naive okay fair enough but i just feel that there will always be a need for some oversight with ai just like there is a need for oversight with programmers writing code you can kill me in the comment section if you want these are just my thoughts i might be wrong but i might be right <laughs> either way it doesn't matter this is going to be something that you are going to be bombarded with and you just have to block it out. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I see these videos now and I don't click on them. I just scroll past them. I just try to stay focused on the goal and block out anything and everything that's not gonna help you move towards your goal. Another question that I have, the third question that I have written down is, what has surprised you the most? What's really surprised me the most is the software engineering community. This, in my experience, has to be one of the most supportive and welcoming communities that I have ever encountered. Almost anyone I've spoken to on Discord channels, you know, direct message on LinkedIn, or even in the comments of these videos have been super helpful, supportive, and just kind. And I have to say that this did really surprise me. You know, a few years ago, you guys know that I started running. And recently I've been trying to get more involved in some of the running communities, you know, 
meet people and go for runs. Man, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's my approach. I don't know what is going on, but it is so freaking hard to get people together to go for a run. They don't respond back. They don't message you. They're not interested in interacting. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Like I said, maybe I really need to think about how I'm going about it, but finding people to run with is not easy. And I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about just people that don't run. I'm actually talking about real runners, people that go for runs all the time. It is not easy, but the software engineering community is just incredible. People respond to you. They give you advice. Even people with huge followings on LinkedIn or even on YouTube will take the time out to answer a question, to comment on something and share some knowledge. It really has been amazing. And uh, it's really surprised me actually, to be honest. So if you are just getting started, know that you are joining a community of people who genuinely want to see you succeed. And I'm one of those people too, so welcome. Now, the fourth question that I have down here is how much programming have I actually learned in the past six months? After six months of you know dedication and coding every single day, I feel like I have built a really great foundation. I know how to create and deploy a website completely on my own. I don't need anyone to help me do this. I think I have a pretty decent idea of how to work with backend technologies as well. I'm not amazing at it by no means, but I know how to connect a database, you know, use some APIs, that kind of stuff. I've also started creating a pretty large website using the Mern stack at the moment. So this means that, you know, I'm now using technologies like React, Express, Node.js, stuff that I had no idea about six months ago. Like I said, I know how to work with the database. You know, I can set up a server. I've learned a lot of terminal commands as well. And you know, how to use the terminal to even make commits on Git and push them to GitHub and how to use the terminal with Git as well. I know how to set up a coding environment and to initialize dependencies. I know how to work with Tailwind, Bootstrap, uh, I'm also getting familiar with TypeScript and I'm also learning about Next.js. It really seems like web development is kind of moving towards that direction. Anyway, I feel like I'm really tooting my own horn here, but you know, to answer the question, you can learn a lot in six months. I mean, you can learn a lot in three months. It really just comes down to your situation and how much time you can spend to develop this skill. But beyond these technologies, I've also become a lot better at problem solving. I mean, I, I remember at the start when the terminal would scream at me for like a bug that I've just hit, I would instantly copy and paste whatever error was, was showing up in the terminal. I'd paste that into Google or I'd chuck it into ChatGPT without even reading it. But now I read through the issue. <laughs> I first read through it. I tried to solve it on my own by actually going over the code again and just trying to debug it on my own as much as possible. I've really learned to live in that space of problem solving for longer. And I think debugging is just like a muscle that you build over time. And something else that I didn't expect is how much coding has started to change the way I think. This might be a placebo effect. You know, I haven't looked up any science on this, but I think because I'm literally solving, you know, these small little problems every single day, I feel like my brain is starting to think more efficiently, even with like simple things, you know, like doing the dishes. Yeah, you know, I think, should I start with washing them all at once? Should I separate them and start the cups first, the plates first? You know, if I do the cups, is that gonna be the right distance away from the cupboard? Like, it's just, you really start to try and you know, make things more efficient in your day to day. My brain just kind of automatically starts trying to find the most efficient ways to do something. And I think it's because you're constantly trying to tell a computer the best way to do something. So that same thought process starts to then apply to your, to your life, to your daily life. And it's pretty wild actually. You just get that little bit better you sort of level up a little bit at working at uh, working through everyday problems. And so the last question that I have here is after six months, are you good enough to work as a programmer? Now, this is a pretty big question. Am I actually good enough to get hired as a programmer? And the answer, well, it depends. It depends a lot on what you've been working on. Have you chosen to work on projects that are specific to the jobs that you're looking to apply for? I think this is really important. You essentially have to de-risk yourself to potential employers. And the only way to do this is to show employers that you can work with the technologies that they are using in-house, or at the very least, that you have the capability to learn them quickly. And this is something that I wish I knew on day one. Choose a set of technologies, you know, a stack, 
and learn how they actually work together and build things in that particular technology stack. Don't just learn pieces in isolation, understand how the front end connects the back end, how APIs work, how databases store and, retri and retrieve data. That's what makes you job ready. And at this stage, I really do feel like I could work as a junior developer. I mean, I really do. I have to back myself here. <laughs> but whether I can properly convey that, that's another challenge entirely. You know, it might mean I need to brush up on my portfolio a little bit more, work on a couple of more little projects, that sort of thing. But ultimately being good enough as a programmer, I think isn't just about knowing, you know, how to code. It's also about, can I prove that I can build things? Can I clearly communicate my skills in a resume or a cover letter? Can I work collaboratively with a team? Can I demonstrate my ability in the technical interview as well? Am I someone that you can trust? And also basic things like, are you like a cool person to work with? Are you not like a dick? <laughs> Those are things that are super important. You know, no one wants to work with someone that is difficult to work with. The real question isn't, am I ready to be a programmer? I don't think you just magically wake up and you just have this epiphany. The real question is, are you getting better every single day? Because if that is happening, then it's only a matter of time until you become a full-fledged programmer. That's just, I mean, that's my assessment anyway. It's more about your attitude than it is about your skills. Skills are important, but your attitude is also super important as well. So be the person that people want to work with. That is probably far more important than how good you are at coding. Even though coding is important, don't get me wrong, obviously it is, it's super important, but your attitude is also super important as well. So here I am six months in and I can confidently say that I've learned a ton. Like I said, not just talking about the coding, but also how to learn, how to problem solve better and just the benefits of practice, just the benefits of being more disciplined, you know, staying consistent and really how it can change your life essentially. If you're just starting out, keep going keep building keep grinding away you know think about that metaphor of the soldiers strudging through the mud that's going to be you at the beginning i mean i'm i'm i go through the mud almost every day with stuff that i'm still working on so i don't think it stops but just get used to that keep learning because you know in six months time you're going to look back and just see how far you've come and you probably will not even recognize the kind of things that you're doing so and i feel like after the six months you might actually just realize that you were a programmer long before you ever gave yourself credit for it. I mean, that's kind of how I feel now anyway. So <laughs> anyways, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one.